So guys, goodabout.com here. So today we're gonna be disassembling the whole Honda Dio for a full customization for my friend Luke. So let's get started. So we're gonna start disassembling the whole scooter to give it a nice clean and decrease the whole engine. That needs to be squeezed in there, man. That's bad. Yeah. The grinding noise here. Yeah. And that's a tiny cover. Degrease the whole thing. Put that in the side. Oh, look at that. I can just put it in there. Oh, yeah. That's pretty convenient. Yeah. See how those motors are. They seem very good. I think there are eight grams. Uh, you know what I did with mine one one time? I sand it down. That works. Yeah. You just remove material from it. Too. Yeah. Man, this nut is always. You want to use the impact? Yeah, I mean, I want to use it, but I don't have the, the right socket for that. Oh. Where is it? Man. So at this point, we realized that we won't be able to remove that now because we didn't have the correct socket, so we decided to leave it for later. <laughs> After we turn down the whole thing, we remove the engine from the frame. We, we're gonna be also cleaning the CVT cover. We're gonna be degreasing the engine, and we're gonna be just you know mostly cleaning and repainting everything so it looks nice and new. So, and we are also gonna be wrapping the harness cable. We got all the parts here ready for cleaning. We're gonna be also stripping down this this paint. So we're gonna leave it in the bare metal so it looks more vintage. We're gonna be wrapping this with an exhaust wrap. We also wanna hide this this ugly welding job. We're gonna try to make everything look as new as possible. So it's gonna look really nice. So next we proceed to remove the flywheel with this flywheel puller, which was pretty simple. You just nap that thing off and that's what basically it. This is the best I ever have right here. You can get that puller in the scooterbelt.com. Well, look how dirty that is. Muy mal. Oh, look how dirty that is. That's pretty dirty. <laughs> Electrical cleaner. That works too. Yeah. But... Then we start degreasing the engine. I really like using this product, highly recommend it. You just spray all over the engine and let it sit for a few minutes. So the way I do this is by using this paint stripper, I highly recommend it, and a brush. So what you basically do is just put a bunch of the paint stripper on top of the exhaust, and then with the brush, you just go over around the whole thing. You wanna make sure you put a really nice thick coat under it because you don't know what kind of paint is this one, so if it's a really good strong paint or if it has many quotes on top of it, so you wanna give it a nice coat. <laughs> So 
some progress here. This is how the sock spin is coming off. I actually like this paint stripper a lot because it removes the paint like nothing. See, just for like an hour or so, it's already off. Okay, looks pretty interesting. So, cover that for a second. This is CVT cover. See how the paint is coming off very nicely. We have the Christmas tree here with the chucks drying out very nicely. And we also painted the stator. We already applied the clear cool and they are drying out. Here we also have the engine We're getting it ready for paint. We're gonna give it a nice coat of black heat resistant paint. So we know this is not the right way to paint an engine, but we just decide to do it. You should take the whole thing apart and, you know, do it the right way. Because the last owner went over with a spray can in the frame and just paint part of the engine and you paint the head of it, as you can see here. So we just want to make it look like new. So we're just going to repaint the entire. Getting the frame ready here for painting. So, like I said, the first quote you want to go a little light, you don't want to go too deep and have so many shiny spots, so you want to cover everything slightly, so you don't want to go too hard. gonna do is he's gonna weld a knot, a bigger knot into the knot so we can put a bigger socket with a bigger wrench and be able to screw that <laughs> it's hot because that sucker is getting there you go yes that's how you remove a ball right there <laughs> professional right here still like real tight okay. and that thing is hot man yeah it's like a thousand degrees man that ball they crashed already oh, fuck. all the way on man we never in the life we're gonna get that off Damn, man. Oh, I don't know, you just fucked this. Oh my god, whoever did this was just, I don't even know. Hopefully they didn't mess up the axle. Oh, it's messed up, I know it. Actually, it might look fine. It, is, it looks okay, <laughs> from what I see. What's, why is it so strong, though? Like, I don't know. Maybe you're welder into the axle. Mm. <laughs> 
as possible. Whatever it takes, though. Ah, it's getting hot, man. Yeah, it's a thousand degrees. Damn, man, it gets like hotter and hotter. Is the whole entire thing hot? Yeah, like, talk, touch the socket. No, I don't want to touch. It's going to burn my hand. Okay, it's coming. Holy crap, man. Woo! Hell yeah, now we're going to clean up, baby. We already changed the weights from the Barriero. We already assembled the, the belt with the with the pulley and everything. We already sent down the exhaust. I think we're gonna leave it like that because we like the vintage style. We're gonna wrap with an exhaust wrap from here to the top, all that part. I'm gonna leave that in better metal so it looks, you know, all rusted and vintage and corroded. You just give it a nice style. And I'm getting ready here to start doing the, redoing the harness cable. We're wrapping the old tape with a new tape. So once you have removed all this trash and you already start off like you have one ramification here you got this one right here and you got this one right here what you want to start doing is you want to start from the connector so you want to start from this one wrap all the way down here cut the tape in here grab this end start off from this connector go all the way down stop here cut it off and then this is going to be your main source so you want to start from here this connector wrap everything around it and make sure you take the end of both part that you cut in here so you take it both and wrap it together so with the time you are not having this problem you know like you're having you know unwrapping parts we're gonna be using obviously the beautiful tesla tape this tape is very high quality highly recommended crazy thing when I was almost getting here into the stator it was all full of silicone because it seems like it was broken from here to here and they just put silicone on it instead of electrical tape like they welder it but they just put silicone on it so we just went we just you know remove the whole thing clean it out because it was full of oil inside from the engine as you can see so that's not good if you want to put a new tape you just want to get rid of all that crap and we just clean it out with a little alcohol so we get rid of all that
it so after cleaning the harness cable you know we're doing the whole wrapping and all that we're ready to install you want to make sure is you want to slide that little rubber piece with the rounded part facing to the engine so there's only four screws for this you have two long ones and two short ones so see the difference of the length so the two long ones are the ones that goes into the actual generator the actual stator and the two shorter ones is the one for the pickup these two bolt starters and these two there's that, that little piece of metal right there that little hook you want to hook that cable in there so it's holding against the engine and it's not going everywhere you want to bend that little piece of metal back in place so it's holding that cable in place it's not moving anywhere so that's how you install the stator it's very easy very straightforward only four bolts that's it we're gonna proceed and screw those in so the way we're gonna do this is you can take two nuts and you're gonna screw one facing out and the other one facing like this so you create some pressure so you can you know go against each other and then you start screwing the whole thing And with the 10 millimeter, you want to grab that nut and unscrew it. the other one back out. And that way, you want to do the same with the other one. And that's how you put the studs back together and then you use the one that comes with it or you can use the same bolt so I don't usually I don't put any zip ties in there because usually hold by itself because I overlap it get a nice overlap so you wanna just keep it tight you know Flip in there, and that way you can cover the whole thing with the wrap, right? Looks nice, man. Yeah, this is how you wrap the exhaust. Look how nice this looks. 
The links are down below in the description. Make sure you check those out. They're pretty nice looking. It's gonna look really nice on that bike. We're gonna try to fit this one in the rear one. It's already gone, but you, you're gonna just give it a shot to see if we're buying another one. We're gonna try to do it with basic tools that we have in the house. You can obviously get the right tools at the scootabout.com, but we're gonna show you now just with a piece of hose that we cut off left in the house and we just drill a hole on it and put a cord so we, you know, we can hold it and some screwdrivers. To swap the, the valve, you wanna put a little bit of oil in the rubber part. You want to lay that valve in the hole and then with the pliers with a scratch in the rim you want to grab the, the thing and push it with your fingers really right and there it goes if, if you do it in the grass yeah let's do it in the grass he's jumping on it the rim inside the, the tire you want to grab a compressor usually you help you will have to remove the inside of the bomb to get more air pops into the into the rim you want to put a little soap around it so it helps the tire move when the air comes in so it's slippery and nice so it's easier for, for the thing to slip inside so you just want to put a little soap in there you step on it hard you can Sometimes with the front wheel, since it's a lot thinner, once you try to press and seal this while you put air on the valve, you get some gaps in the side, so it's a lot harder to you know seal the thing too. We're gonna use a strap to strap around the, the tire, so it press down the whole thing around uniformly, so it seals the, the bit, so when I put the air inside the rim, it pops the... You can get yours at thescootabout.com. Links are down below in the description. So the way you put this on is just 
basically the same. You try to put first one part into the rounded part, and then you slide in the, the flat in place. That's the highest one, huh? Yeah. Oh, what well, do you know? Yeah, it, it might work now better. Yeah, that's probably good. That's good. Today we're going to attempt to stretch out the engine. As you can see we are already removing from the frame so we can get access to the swim arm. We should do this before the painting but we decide to do it afterwards. So you just got to get access to the swim arm so you can cut it off, add the new bars and then we're going to be also doing the crossbar for the bike. So we're making the marks, so measuring everything so it's nice and fit to make all the cuts in the correct position. <laughs> My friend Luke while was cutting the swing arm accidentally cut the spark plug cable so let's find another one <laughs> Then we proceed to reinforce the actual swing arm that we will to with the new bar so we can add more strength to it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click that like button, share with your friends, and see you in the next one.